and then we're switching gears from 354 to 456. There's a pinion, and there's a big ass pinion for the 354. Twice the size of the 350 or the 456. See how she runs, how the low end is, how she crawls. Be nice. That's for it. Welded diff. With my booger weld, that's with a 110. The front looks a lot better. The 110 welder, scooped it on, and she held. I already ran it with the 354s, tried some stuff, did donut, peeled out, did a bunch of crap. You see if it would break it, and it didn't break it, so. Cool. Let's go check out the. That's off a 110 welder, so don't use a 110. And over here is a. That was done by a 110 wire bed. No, no bueno. No good. This one. That's done by a 220 arc welder. Better penetration, better weld, should not break. Put a plate in the middle. These are full floating axles, they just come out. So if this breaks, I'll buy a fucking spool. I don't think they'll break. U joints and all the other crap will break before this thing breaks. Even with the 110 welder, the U joints, the axle will probably break before that breaks. Even though it looks like crap. Hey. Right. What do you want me to say? Huh? Tell them what you did. Tell them how you pay me asses. <laughs> <laughs> We switched the gear from 354 to 456. On the Dana 6 in the back, you gotta buy a spacer right here if you zoom in on it. Right there, that's a spacer. And that's the gear. And you see the, the edge right there, that's not part of this. So you buy the spacer and you can use this carrier. And then what we can do is get the backlash. I get about six thousandths. We marked it with paint. Just see where it was rubbing, and we're good. And that's done. We also, when you put it in, you gotta pop these bearings off. Now if those bearings don't come off, you gotta buy new bearings. You gotta cut those off and then press them off or just cut them off and get them off and put new bearings because the shims that they got in there are gonna hold this gear too far back and you have way too much backlash. This is what you want right here. Look at that, about 6,000. And then you put the shims in get it right we got lucky here these bearings came off pretty easy so we we're able to use them and we just pulled a thicker shim from this side and put it on this side put her back in and we're golden but we're good we got lucky with those bearings now the front I had to buy all new bearings and shim but those fucking bearings ain't coming off for nothing and in the front on the Dana 44 they don't make a ring gear shim to use the original carrier if you have 370 or 392s and down or 373s and down gears so i had 354s and i put 456s on the front the dana 44 has a carrier brake at um 392 it's 392 or 373 down and 392 and up so i had to buy a whole new carrier for it and then the gear worked i just gotta figure out my shims 
Because on that one, once you press those bearings on, the carrier, they ain't fucking coming off. And you ain't gonna get them off. You'd have to cut them off. So, I'll do a video about that, where you use the axle to get in there, get my backlash right, line my bearings up with the races and everything, and then put shims, just kind of wedge them in there, get a ballpark idea, hopefully it's close enough, and then press it on, put it in. And it should be good. Hopefully. <laughs> but it should be good. Oh yeah, that came out good. We got lucky on that. <laughs> Cutting the two main brackets for the transmission kit plate. This all works badass. I've got hundreds. I've made a whole trailer like this one saw blade. Better metal. All the way up to quarter inch by three inch. Here I'm building a transmission slide to protect my transfer case because it hangs so low. Hopefully it works out and it doesn't break my transfer case. Right here I'm building rock sliders the truck using 120 steel 2 inch square I think it came out pretty nice Here we installed the rock lights. It was an easy installation, one underneath each wheel well and one underneath each side of the cab and two on the back. It came out nice. 